Well, hello again. This is Pastor John Kras here at First Baptist of Horton, Kansas. And I had to stop by and grab myself another cup of coffee just to get me through the day. You know how that is. We need something to comfort us, to help us. However, hopefully, coffee is not your only source. May Christ be your true source of comfort and consolation. And that is what, in our time this morning, I want to discuss with you here in Philippians. Yes, we're starting once again in Philippians for our midweek devotion. Last week, we finished up chapter 1 and saw how Paul was encouraging the church there when conflict came without what to do. Now, beginning in chapter 2, we're just going to look at verse 1. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, I'm going in there. Because Paul will be telling us when we meet again exactly what to do. When com conflict comes from within, or how to avoid conflict from within. But right now, he's giving us the resources. So he knows that conflict will come. Why? Because we are human. We have our own motives. We have so much that we bump heads get. Yes, we are created new in Christ, but we are not perfect yet. But Paul says, consider what Christ has given you and use this as your resource for what he will prescribe in verses 2 through 4. But what is those requirements? He raises these in rhetorical questions. He says, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ. Oh yeah, Christ just came and left us. He left us with nothing, right? No, he left us with everything. We are his brothers and sisters. We now through him are the sons and daughters of the heavenly father. He has left us the comforter, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, he is the one who brings Christ to us. He, he Because John the gospel writer John tells us that when Jesus was with his disciples, he says, I will send you another who will comfort you and guide you in all truth. Who is truth? Jesus. You could say the Holy Spirit is in one sense, and actually I do believe it was Spurgeon who's made a phrase similar to this, the idea that the Holy Spirit is the physician but Christ is the medicine. That we have been healed because of Christ. The Holy Spirit just showed us how to apply you. We are alive because of Christ. But it is the Holy Spirit which brings him to us to quicken us. We have many things to be consoled on. Yes, our Savior went back to heaven, but he has left us so many things. But it's not only the consolation in Christ, but the comfort of love. We're not in a dry religion where it's just mostly made on mental facts or a legalistic attitude. It is one built upon a relationship. A relationship also not built upon fear or discouragement, but built upon love. It is that source which causes us to look beyond ourselves, look to God, look to one another, and put them before ourselves. Why? Because when we were out far away from God, we were consoled that God reached down from heaven through his Son and loved us, still loves us. So we do have this great comfort of that love and there is no one else who can truly give us that comfort. If we have any fellowship of the Spirit is another attribute which Paul says, if we have this, 
If we have this fellowship, we do. When we are groaning in our prayers, not knowing what to pray, we can know and feel the presence of the Spirit in our lives, interceding in our behalf, knowing that what we're unable to do, He is there to help us. And not only in our prayers, but when we're just trying to live and we're not quite sure what to do, should we take path A or path B? We pray, and the Spirit will teach us and lead us if we only but listen. And then, through that fellowship of the Spirit, we have fellowship with one another because that same Spirit resides in each every one of us as believers in Christ. His Spirit speaks to His Spirit within our spirits. Unites us. Oh, there's so much stuff just in this one verse. And, and then, if there is any consolation in the affection and the mercy of God. Come on now. Christ came because of God's love for us. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So loved. We deserved the wrath of God, but he gave us his mercy. He gave us his grace. He gave us his love, his affection. We deserve so much. But for the grace of God, but for the mercy of God, we didn't get it. But for the grace of God, we got so much more. God pours out his love for us. As we've been talking, have you been in your own mind been thinking about some of the things which we just hinted out through Paul that we have already within us. We have a great arsenal to combat any disunity amongst us. We have the consolation which is in Christ. We have been brought back while we wait for him, he has given us his spirit. He has given us salvation. He has given his love. He has given us the uniting presence of his spirit. He has given us comfort. He has given us a great power. Not human power. Not an intellectual power. Not a physical power. But a power of the spirit. And it is that which can help us be more Christ-like. Let us pray to that end. Lord God, we just want to come before you and just learn more just what's in this one verse. And it's even not even a full statement. It's just four questions with the idea that something's just around the corner. But in these questions... We are reminded of all that we have been blessed with. We've been blessed with the consolation of being in you. We have been blessed by the comfort of your love. We have been blessed and continually being blessed by the presence of your spirit. And all of this is available because we have been blessed with your affection for us and your mercy. Help us now to not only know these in the back of our mind, but to feel them in our lives, to live them out. So whether an enemy comes from within the church body, without the church body, or with even in our own mind, we can stand strong because we have this mighty arsenal of love within us and your power and so much more. And all this we pray, amen. Well, you now have heard a little bit about what you do have. Meet us next time as we find out how we can use it. Have a blessed day.